Hello, this is Dr. Gandhi. Welcome to my video on performing a reflection using SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, we're working with variables that are sometimes not normally distributed. And if the variable is positively skewed, we can move right into data transformation if that's the route we choose to go. If we want to use a parametric statistic that would require the data to be normally distributed. However, if we have a variable that has a negative skew, negatively skewed variables require performing what's referred to as a reflection prior to applying the transformation. For example, a log transformation or a square root transformation. So here I'm going to show you the process for performing a reflection. So you can see I have three variables, and these are fictitious data loaded in the data editor here. I have a variable that is positively skewed, a variable that is negatively skewed, and a variable that follows a normal distribution. The focus here will be the variable that's negatively skewed, a variable that would require a reflection before transformation. This variable is currently sorted in ascending order, right? So the lowest value is appearing at the top and the highest, the maximum value, at the bottom. We need to determine the maximum value in order to begin the reflection process. So if it's a small data set like this, we could just scroll down and see the maximum value at the bottom, or we can sort descending, and the maximum value will come to the top or we can right click and select descriptive statistics and just look for the maximum. You can see it's 67.52. I find this method to be the most convenient way of finding the maximum value because you don't have to worry about sorting the data because depending on the type of data you're working with you may not want it sorted and you may have to return it back to its original order. Using this method, you won't have to. So we see we have the maximum, and we want to remember this number, 67.52. So now I'm going to move to transform, and then compute variable. And this is what the compute variable dialog looks like by default. You can see first we need to name a target variable. So I'm going to name this reflected variable. And then we have a numeric expression. So you remember we want to note the maximum value and you can see here it's 67.52 and we need to take that value and add 1 to it. So we'll start with that. So it'd be 68.52 and then we want to subtract each score in the negatively skewed variable. So it would be minus, and then move, move over the negative skew variable here. So you have 68.52 minus negative skew. And when I click OK, I'll create a new variable named reflected variable. So I'll click OK. And we can see we have the new variable reflected variable, and of course the original variable negative skew. So let's take a look at the descriptives for these two variables. I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore. And the two variables that I'm interested in here are negative skew, so I'm going to move that over to the dependent list list box, and reflected variable. I'll move that over as well. And then under plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf. I'm going to check off histogram here under descriptive. And then down here, I'm also going to select normality plots with tests. Click continue and then click OK. So you can see here that we have the descriptives for both the negatively skewed variable named negative skew and the reflected variable named reflected variable. And you can see the skewness 
for the negatively skewed variable is negative 1.218. And notice the skewness for the reflected variable is 1.218. Not negative, uh, positive. So you can see it's reflection. The reflected variable is reflection of the negative skew variable. Notice that their kurtosis is not affected. It's also worth noting here that the interquartile range is not affected. The range is identical, as are the variance and standard deviation values. Moving down to the test of normality, I would normally interpret the Shapiro-Wilk, and you can see in both cases here we need to reject the null hypothesis that the values in these variables were sampled from a normal distribution. So we would assume that both of these variables are not normally distributed. So reflecting a variable does not change whether it will be normally distributed or not. There's absolutely no change. You can see the statistic is identical for both the negative skew variable and the reflected variable. So the reflection is a step in the transformation process, but it is not the transformation itself. Then moving down to the histogram for the negative skew variable, and you can see clearly this variable is negatively skewed. We have all these points here to the left, right, the tail points toward the left, so we have a negative skew. And if we look at the normal QQ plot, or quantile quantile plot, we can see that toward the left, the points are plotted above the line. In the center, the points are plotted below the line, but they're very close and they're more or less parallel with the line. And then toward the right, the points are plotted above the line, what we would expect for a negative skew on a normal QQ plot. And then moving down, we take a look at the box plot, we can see all the outliers are below the bottom whisker. So now if we take a look at the reflected variable, it clearly has a tail that points toward the right, so it's positively skewed now. And if we look at the normal QQ plot for reflected variable, starting over here toward the left, we can see the points are plotted below the line. And then toward the center, the points are right above the line and more or less parallel to it, and then toward the right, they're plotted below the line again. So again, what we would expect for a positively skewed variable on a normal QQ plot. And then moving to the box plot, we can see all the outliers are above the top whisker. So at this point, you have a reflected variable, and you could proceed on to a transformation, and you would be transforming this variable, the reflected variable, you could also, if you're going to use the transformation here, build all the steps into one numeric expression. For example, if I go to transform and compute variable, and let's say that I want to use a square root transformation. So I'll create a new target variable. I'll just call it SQRT for square root. And you can see I have the expression here for the reflection. So if I put that in parentheses, and then I just go right before the left parenthesis and just put in square root. I'm performing the reflection and the square root transformation in the same numeric expression. So if I click OK, we can see I have the square root of the reflected value for the values in the negative skew variable. If I wanted to use separate steps, I could just go to transform, compute variable, and I'll call this one square root two. I could just take the square root of the reflected variable and click OK. And you can see the values here and these two columns are identical. The first has all the functions in one numeric expression, 
and the second just takes the square root of the reflected variable, with the reflected variable being in a separate column, being a variable that was created separately and displayed. I hope you found this video on performing a reflection using SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.